Dear ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go for a journey to the great country of Nepal. We will try to meet new people, eat lots of food, try not to be eaten and climb to the top of the world. And it all starts with Ladies and gentlemen, we have landed at Murara International Airport. The local time now is 1.23 in the afternoon and the temperature is 33 degrees Celsius. You might ask, what were we doing in Bali? Well, simply said, it was just the first part of the trip. I've never been to Bali before, and for some reason, I've always imagined it to be full of beautiful beaches with white sand and blue water. I also currently live in Australia, and my expectations might be just a tiny bit high. But let me tell you, the beaches there are... Eh. But the true beauty of Bali is in its nature. The entire island is covered in thick jungles, beautiful waterfalls, countless mountains, and even some volcanoes. This one in particular is especially naughty. Here's a list of its eruptions only in the past three years. But thankfully, it decided to take a little nap for those three days we were there. Although our time there was limited, we still managed to do quite a bit. Of course, we had to visit all the touristy things. We saw the temples, saw the monkeys, made new friends. And it was actually my first time seeing like a proper waterfall. So here I am, just can't contain my excitement. Oh, cool. <laughs> the whole Bali part was actually planned for my birthday. So there's only one right way to end the day. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, Dennis. Happy birthday to you! That was a really cool uh, video effect. Is it? Yeah, it was a lightning. It's CGI. CGI, yeah. Okay. You do it. A wish. Yeah, you all 23 years old. How do you feel? Not 23. Are you you gonna turn 24 next year? Sure, 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 sure. That's and 25, and you're getting married in 27, so <laughs> three more years to go. Okay, okay, okay. And that's basically it for Bali. Probably the first impression of Nepal to anyone who ever comes here for the first time is what a mess! But that mess is exactly why people should come to Nepal. From the very first moment you step your foot on the streets of Kathmandu, the craziness begins. You're constantly surrounded by endless amounts of motorcycles, people in traditional clothing, scent of spices that is coming from every corner and overall the sort of atmosphere that you can only experience in this part of the world. I came here with my friend Inos, who is Nepalese, so I was fortunate enough to stay at his house and experience the culture in all of its glory. <laughs> How are we doing it? Did we just go? Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Did we just the only problem was he doesn't live in Kathmandu. He lives in Pokhara, and the only way to get there is by bus. The road goes through the mountains, and let me tell you, the views are not for the weak ones. Oh boy. Oh my god. <laughs> 
Even though Pokhara is the biggest city, you will never find it on the map. Instead, it is proudly covered by the country name of Nepal. It only reveals itself when you zoom in. I think Google knew exactly what it was doing. Because Pokhara is an entire country in one city. It has everything Nepal has to offer. And from this video, you will find exactly what that is. Pokhara is located in Pokhara Valley and is surrounded by mountains. But we'll get to them later. It is very interesting how it's built. Almost all the houses are two to three stories tall and they are built with an expectation that the neighboring house is going to be built right next to them. That's why you can rarely find any windows on the sides of the buildings. The streets make swirls and zigzags forming the maze that forms the city itself. Pokhara lies on seven lakes. Let's try to count them. So, that's, that's, that's one of them, right? No, two of them. That's so one, that's two, different, two? two different lakes. Right? Is this that's, one? Does uh, this one count? Rupa, that's Beganas. Uh huh. And the one, the one that we bought the other day, the Fewa. And there's four more somewhere hidden. Uh, yeah, but I haven't seen them. <laughs> <laughs> They're like a bit further, like, but like some of them are dying. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh man. But like this is the like, famous one. Yeah. yeah. Two of these. The biggest lake and at the same time the biggest tourist attraction is Lake Feva. Its lake site is a must when you visit Pokhara. For most adventurers, you can even rent a boat. Well, we are adventurers. Yeah? Yeah. You good to go? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> nah, I'll be fine. Can I? I'll be fine. Before. Ah, good job, buddy. Thank you. It was very easy to take day trips everywhere because Inos' house is actually just outside of Pokhara, which also means it's the best place to see Himalaya mountains. All right, fellas, we have a problem. I came to Nepal and promised that I could see Himalayas from his house over here. It's my fifth day here. For this whole time, the Himalayas has been covered in like fog or cloud or whatever. Right now you can sort of see them, but it's not the full thing. I have four days to go. Nepal, don't let me down, okay? If you're ever in Nepal, you have to visit at least one temple. They are stunning. The architecture is beautiful and the environment is just so welcoming. And at the same time, they leave a lot of questions. This particular one, we spent two hours driving in dangerous conditions, then some time going up and down the hill. It was located in the middle of nowhere and people still go there. So my obvious question was, why, why, why is this temple so special? Because the really famous goddess uh -huh. lives here. So why, how do you know that she lives there? Because, I don't know, like some kind of people who talk in behalf of them. Uh huh. So they tell them that she lives here and the people do it there. Oh, okay, cool. But I must warn you, some rituals could be a bit traumatizing if you're not prepared. In Hinduism, there's this ritual of sacrifice. Usually, they would sacrifice something less significant, like a coconut. But if family is wealthier, and the occasion is just right, then they might sacrifice something more significant. On the top of the hill, we saw this ritual. I'm not entirely sure what it was, either wedding or some other celebration or worshiping, but they would then proceed down to the temple and offer the sacrifice to the local god. I witnessed it myself, not this one, but in another temple. Not going to lie, it was a chilling experience. But who am I to criticize tradition that was shaped up for thousands of years? It is part of them, it is part of their culture, and it is completely normal to them. On the bright side, the views on the way there and on the way back were absolutely stunning. Our main transportation method was car. We took it everywhere. And honestly, you can make a completely separate video about the roads in this part of the world. It seems like driving rules are non-existent. Actually, no, there are rules, 
but none of the rules are written down. Everybody just knows what's happening. Everybody but me. Cars seem to go everywhere they like. It is just a miracle that there's almost no accidents. A lot of roads lie through the mountains, and that makes looking out of the car window especially interesting. When the rain comes, roads tend to get damaged from the landslides. But surprisingly, Nepal is quite efficient when it comes to fixing them. Wildlife is also thriving. The main occupants of the roadsides are cows, but you can occasionally see more exotic transportation methods. What is great about Nepal is that the nature is everywhere. You can be in the middle of the city and still see some wonders of nature. There was this place between all the buildings and nobody really told me where we're going. Uh, what are we doing here? So it's like a, like a uh, pool and caves, right? Yeah, sort of like... Like a waterfall? Waterfall. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's crazy to think about that such a place can be in the city. Like it's, it's almost in the middle of the city, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> it's crazy, hey? <laughs> I'm not sure if it's called waterfall, it's like a drain, you know? A water what? Goes, like water goes inside. It's just like, oh. it's cool to oh. say it. I can hear something, but... Water is going, but where is it? I can't understand. <laughs> what is it supposed to be? It's supposed to be a waterfall. Or like, like going south in... Flow, yeah. It should be all overflow, like flowing all the way up here. But it's not a good season to work. Watch it. Okay, cool. Well, <laughs> unlucky again. <laughs> a very funny story about the, this waterfall that we saw. Uh, apparently, it's called David's Pole. And the reason. Oh, there it is! The reason why it's called David's Pole is because there was a guy called David who fell into the pole. Now it's called David's Pole. <laughs> so now Dennis is trying to make it Dennis Pole. <laughs> Dennis, Dennis Pole. Dennis one. <laughs> but you can actually see it. Look at that. There. Finally. Good. See that one? Nice. Later, turned out that right across the street there's a cave that would lead to the bottom of that same waterfall. Uh -huh. Oh man. Oh, that's really warm. Yeah. Oh, and slippery. <laughs> oh. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> wow, it's really warm. Why is it so warm? Be careful. That's so cool. So what was it in us? The, the water that we saw in the uh, waterfall we can see here, right? Oh, uh, there it is. Can you see it? Oh man. The waterfall that we saw. That one. And he comes into here. See, look, middle of the city, and two such big tourist attractions like waterfall and and the caves. That's Nepal for you. The same night, we suddenly decided to go up the mountains and try to see Himalayas one last time. The place is called Dampus, and it was a couple hours drive away. So we bought warm clothes had some street food and headed out so we're we're going for like a like a mountain like a hotel thing right yeah, yeah. and then we're gonna be tracking like today or tomorrow i'm not sure but we stopped like on the mountain in the middle of nowhere all the city is so far so there's no light pollution on top of the mountain the view it's just it's crazy I've never seen something like this it's complete darkness and you can see every single star there is in universe literally that is absolutely fascinating so cool and you can see the poker I'm guessing that's poker valley right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. oh man oh that just that's that's so worth it so much worth it up there in the middle of December it was very chilly hotel that we stayed at provided a natural heater for us to warm up. We ate some more and a bit more and went to bed. It's like six o'clock in the morning right now. We're so high up at the mountains that it's 
almost freezing cold it's three degrees right now but even from like my door is open right now and you can already see the mountains crystal clear no Himalayas. no clouds Himalayas as my Nepalese friend says and my Nepalese friend knows better <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man the sun was slowly rising so we decided to get some tea sit down and enjoy the view it's like freezing cold but it's so much worth it so basically we can took off the Himalayas from the things to see list oh man it's really cold it's like three degrees it's fine it's good it's worth it see oh man imagine like a person lives like in this house or like this house or whatever they wake up every morning to see this kind of view I wonder if they like appreciate it hey yeah I don't think so hey. mm. Oh well. I mean it's a nice nice life. You have like what like 4G and electricity and the TV and water. like water so yeah everything you have everything. And, view. and exactly yeah. Like what else do you need for life? You can grow your own food here and rice patty patties and, so you, and so veggies you, and stuff. So you plan to settle down here? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Okay, cool. I mean the views just keep getting better. like really feels like you can literally touch the mountains like they're so big that they look really really close but in fact they're like what like <laughs> they're far away actually <laughs> really far <laughs> really far two, two days far two days walk right but it's just to reach the base camp not the actual thing you have really oh yeah I'm now i'm gonna be hiking for like an hour right yeah. Where are we headed? <clears throat> to like Australian base camp? Australian base camp. Why is it called Australia? Because some of the Australian people didn't tend to like hike there. Camping did the camping and left some of their camping stuff. So that's why they're... <laughs> now it's called Australian base camp. Because <laughs> technically they started. Like, you know. <laughs> and people are leaving for cheap, really cheap. Okay. You guys, you really do like naming stuff after... after somebody else like it's really easy to name stuff what even Australians left, left the camp oh now it's Australian base camp somebody fell in the pool now it's David's pool That's <laughs> the hike itself was not supposed to be so bad it's about one and a half kilometers long but we've been hiking for exactly like five minutes I'm already out of breath <laughs> we'll be we were going straight up the mountain breathtaking <laughs> Very much breathtaking. The track itself was mostly this narrow patch of dirt and rocks, but also sometimes went through the forest. I tried communicating with wildlife, but was completely ignored. The track offered some pretty good views until we finally reached the Australian base camp. There it is. Missed the camp. Up there, we could finally see what's happening around us. And honestly, no camera will ever able to express what a human eye could see. Another thing that I can take off uh, off my list: hiking, mini hiking for free <laughs> in Nepal. Thick. The camp itself consisted of a couple of buildings and tents. It was self-sufficient. They were growing chickens and rabbits, like a proper functioning little city on the top of the mountain. They were baking bread, and honestly, that was the nicest breakfast I've ever had. No way, we're having a little breakfast with some tea. And with this here. Ah. We rested a bit and started heading back. Probably Nepal's greatest asset is its nation. I've met so many good people on this journey and the emotions after meeting them are out of this world. They're friendly, kind, welcoming. We had Inos' brother-in-law, Durga, close his jewelry shop on the spot to guide us around for the entire time we were there. He drove us everywhere, and thanks to him, experience was even richer. 
Inos' brother met us at the airport, took us to Pokhara and hanged out almost every day making sure that we are safe and well fed. And just overall, random strangers who often despite language barriers stopped on the streets and had a little talk with me. Nepalese honor culture, traditions and take religion very seriously. But at the same time, they dream about the future, are open for changes and they most definitely like to have fun. I spent 10 days in Nepal and this time was probably the most out of comfort zone I've ever been. It is just so drastically different from what I'm used to but at the same time I felt like I was at home and I belonged there. Nepal starts with mountains. They reach all the way to the sky and have heights of more than 8,000 meters. Up there, no life can exist. But that is exactly where life begins. Rivers flow down the mountains until they finally reach the valleys. And it all ends in flatlands, where the wildlife takes over. The combination of them three seems impossible, yet they all exist in one country, and that is Nepal. <laughs> 